Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us here on Health Professional Radio. In this segment, we're going to be speaking with returning guest, Dr. Jan Wekamp. He's joining us here as Vice President, Gastroenterology Disease Area Leader for the Immunology Therapeutic Area at Janssen Research and Development. He's returning to talk about some new Phase two Tremphia data uh, in Crohn's disease and some data from three long-term pool safety analyses of patients with ulcerative colitis and CD treated with Stellara. Welcome back, Jan. How have you been? Hey, how are you? Thanks for having me, Neil. Good to talk to you. Right. Well, for those who may not be familiar with you as a contributor, give us a bit of your professional background, and then let's jump right into these two studies, okay? Sure. Thank you. So, as you said, said I serve as the Vice President and Disease Area Leader for Gastroenterology at Janssen Research and Development. And my personal background, I'm licensed in three specialties in internal medicine in clinical pharmacology and in gastroenterology. And I have a clinical background, a science background, and an entrepreneur uh, background. And yeah, it's, uh, it's exciting to oversee so many programs at Janssen, and uh, I'm excited to share a little bit what we do. Ulcerative colitis and uh, Crohn's disease. What's the current landscape look like for these two conditions? And um, are treatment options vastly different? Sure. So there are many treatment options available today for patients um, that can offer release from the symptoms of moderate to severe Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Unfortunately, it still takes sometimes quite some time before a patient can receive a clear diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And then more time to find the right therapy that works for them, especially to get into a real sustained symptom-free remission. And frustra frustratingly for patients, in many cases, treatments don't work uh, for long and patients lose a uh, response. Um, so we, we do have, um, so patient, patients either do not respond to therapies or after responding, lose response. And um, that means for treatment, which usually takes 60 years, most patients are young, it means that patients need 60 years of treatment options. And the current average for the first more advanced treatment is maybe um, 18, 19, maybe around two years. But um, again, so people, patients, um, Need need more than one option, and um, we talked before about anti TNS, uh, Remicade. We talked about um, different immunosuppressants. We talked about um, Stella, and and I will talk about Stellara and um, Tramphia today. Mm -hmm. But Tramphia is not approved yet, so we are still developing it. Obviously, UC and CD impact the quality of a, of a person's life greatly. You said that the drugs d stop working. That's in itself is a challenge. How do these conditions uh, affect a person's life, whether treated or left untreated? Sure. I mean, of course, diarrhea, loose. Um, these are I mean, some symptoms, but most importantly, um, patients with inflammatory bowel diseases are sick. Um, usually they are young and I mean the peak is 25 and many patients are younger they can also be older but it, it hits the disease hits at the prime of life so most patients in this age usually people like to think about maybe their education meeting a future wife or husband or um, I mean other things than um, being scared to find the next restroom. And so it's it's really about um, being sick, being compromised in daily activities, not able to plan the next week or even the next day. Mm. So patients are, are, are very, um, yeah, if they don't have the right treatment option, if they don't have a treatment which brings them into true remission, daily life is affected in a major way. And of course, Besides the GI tract, um, more than 50% of the patients have symptoms outside of, of the intestine. It can be joints, it can be uh, the skin, it can be other parts of the body. 
And um, of course, surgery is, is something which affects patients uh, and, I mean, also is related to fears and, I mean, re I mean based on um, sometimes side effects from surgery. So this is, this is a, this is a real a disease which is deeply affecting normal life. Digestive Disease Week 2022. There was some some data that was presented there concerning uh, Trimphia and Stellara. Uh, tell us about these studies. Uh, why are the findings significant? Sure. I mean, maybe let me let me give you a couple of general comments about our direction, what we do. I mean, in general, we are an important race to innovate for these patients. Uh, it, I mean, our lens is we go into diseases where considerable needs remain and we are dedicated to advancing care on behalf of these millions of people worldwide living with immune mediated diseases such as inflammatory bowel diseases. Also, I mean, secondly, this year DDW, that's one of the topics of today, we presented data which did support our strategy to advance Tramplia and Stellara to lead the industry in redefining treatment paradigms for people specifically with Crohn's disease and also to colitis. And then finally, from based on basically two decades long legacy of immunology innovation, we continue to generate new evidence for Stellara and we are deeply investing in our pipeline for new treatments, leveraging the continued research of pathway science to establish Tramphia as a trusted therapeutic option for patients. And um, the, um, Tramphia is not approved um, yet. And we presented phase two data um, about efficacy and safety. So for the first point, in general, Crohn's disease and also to colitis impact about 3 million Americans and many more patients around the globe. And there's no cure for the chronic, for this chronic progressive disease. The goal is remission, sustained clinical remission. And as we discussed earlier, most patients don't have that, at least not for a longer time and not um, predictable. The approval of Stellara, an IL-12, IL-23 antagonist for the treatment of adults with moderately to severe active Crohn's and moderately to severe active ulcerative colitis paved the way for Janssen's um, pathway science exploration and progress in the evaluation of existing therapies and additional modalities for novel therapeutic options for the future of IBD. To the second point, Tramphia. So new Tramphia data from the Galaxy 1 Phase 2 clinical trial showed patients with moderately to severe active Crohn's disease with Tramphia across those groups and achieved very high rates of clinical biomarker response up to 66.7%. That's remarkable in our view. Endoscopic response ranging up to 46%. And clinical remission with CRP protein or fecal calprotectin normalization also up to 66.7% through 48 weeks of treatment. And remember, this is treat through. So there's no re-randomization of the patients. These patients with a 66.7% remission are the same patients who entered the study at day one. The safety results, I mean, for patients, it's always important, efficacy and safety. The safety results of the trial were consistent with the known safety profile of Tramphia in approved indications. And in addition to Tramphia, we presented results from three long-term food safety data for Stellara. This is very important to after, I mean, Stellara is approved in both indication Crohn's and also colitis. But it is important, even after the study uh, drug is approved, to um, monitor the safety. So in the f first findings 
from an analysis of, of phase two, three studies, event rates per 100 patient years for adverse events, serious adverse events, infections, serious infections, and cardiac events were similar or lower for Stellara compared to placebo. So up to five years in Bionase patients with Crohn's disease and up to, uh, up to two years in Bionase patients with oxidative colitis. So basically in everything we looked, no difference to um, placebo. Second, long-term safety data analyzed of five phase two, three studies, event rates per 100 patient years adverse events, serious adverse events, infections, serious infections, cardiac interventions, malignancies were similar between Stellar and placebo to up to five years, five years in biofailure patients with Crohn's disease and up to two years in biofailure patients with UC. It's important to distinguish between because these patients are more sick as compared to the Bionase patient population. And third, Pool safety analyzes data from 13 total studies, um, two in UC, five in Crohn's, and plaque psoriasis, no increased incidence, uh, malignancy, or stellar treatment compared to placebo. Jan, give us a website where our listeners can learn much more about these two studies and keep track of uh, approvals as they uh, are granted. Sure. So um, our global phase three clinical trial um, it can be found at globaltrialfinder.jansen.com. And of course, uh, we, all these data which we presented are published. So um, um, physicians and also patients can, all, um, can, can access these, these um, data over the, the usual um, scientific search engines in the web. And I do believe more can uh, also be found at www.jansen.com slash uh, gastroenterology. Yeah. Jan, always a pleasure. Thank you so much for returning. I'm looking forward to our next conversation. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much for having me. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with returning guest, Dr. Jan Wakeham. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.